Hi guys, it's Carol. How are ya? We uh, just dropped the kids off at home. And we're gonna go to Sonic for happy hour and get a cherry lime made so I can take a Tylenol because my head hurts. Uh, it's not as hot a day as it has been being. What's the temperature, Casey? 91. 91. Whoops, this fell down. Um, oh, I, all, I, I want you all to go to texasmonthly.com. That's a, a magazine. If I could subscribe to any magazine, I would take Texas Monthly, I think. They have good, good writers. Anyway, uh, there is an article on the barbecue place. Well, I think the title was The Barbecue Place That Was Saved by Sandbags and Prayers. And it's about a barbecue place here in Amarillo that was in that area that flooded really bad. There's a picture of it with this restaurant sitting like in the great, in the middle of this great big pond. Anyway, the article talks about uh, the owner and uh, how he invited seven, 17 family and friend friends to come help him make sandbags. I wanted to go make sandbags. I Taylor too. <laughs> she didn't think I could do it. But anyway, Rhett and Taylor spent an entire day making sandbags uh, for Tyler. So I want y'all to go read that article. Uh, it tells y'all about about the flood. That poor man. I feel sorry for him. Anyway. I'm going to show you a picture of my pie crust. There is no way I'm going to attempt to make a pie crust myself. There's, I just, that's not me. So I always buy frozen pie shells. I buy great value deep dish and they suit me just fine. And I got one out today, this morning, to bake to make my chocolate pie. Well, that poor pie shell had been in the freezer probably since before Thanksgiving. I probably bought it to buy pumpkin, bought it to make pumpkin pies for Thanksgiving most likely and I guess things have fallen on it and stuff and it was all broken up. But I, th I thought it out and, and patched it back together <laughs> and poked holes in the bottom, I thought and I baked it and I set a timer and I was busy trying to get lunch. We had barbecue chicken and potato salad, and I had a can of baked beans I never even opened. Oh, well, we didn't need them. And uh, we had zucchini chips and cantaloupe. Anyway, the timer went off, and I was thinking that was for my boiled eggs, and I forgot that I had those pie shells in the oven. Taylor tells me, Grandma, don't even be in the kitchen unless one of us is with you. Because <laughs> I, I am too brain foggy. Anyway, finally dawned on me after I had peeled the eggs and chopped them up. It finally dawned on me, oh, I have my shells in the oven. So they're a little overdone, but they'll be okay. They didn't look bad. But just because this is the Keep It Real channel. Oh, new subs, this is... This is not a cooking channel. <laughs> this, I cook sometimes just because we have to eat, but it's this is not a cooking channel. Because we like to eat. Because <laughs> we love to eat, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to stick a picture in of my pie crust so you can see what real life pie crust looks like. <laughs> uh, and then I, I have on my earrings today. Taylor got out all of my earrings and put them on an earring tree thing. And I thought, I really should wear earrings. Why don't I ever put earrings on? And so I put these on today. Casey gave me these, was it at Christmas? Your birthday. My birthday. Um, and so we were talking about her getting her ears pierced. Do you want to tell them? Oh, so we had talked about in a previous video about how my skin um, heals. How, well, how do I put it? I, I, I used to think it was keloid scars. Mom thinks it's keloid scars. But then I went to a dermatologist and she said, 
it's not a, actually a keloid scar. Your hit, skin just overheals. That's what it was. Which I thought was what a keloid scar was. So I don't know. But anyway, um, I was always scared to get my ears pierced because I was afraid they would overheal. And I've seen people with big keloid scars on their ears. Well, I decided I wanted to do it for my birthday coming up. But then on the Dr. Pimple Popper show, I saw this man who had both his ears pierced and one was perfect. And another ear, he had, it formed a big lump and then it pulled his earlobe down. It took years, but it was like a big ball right here. Oh, of, poor guy. Yeah, it was horrible. He wouldn't even get married. That's why he was on the show is he just told his fiance that he wanted to get that fixed before he got married so people well. weren't just staring at that and she took it off and sewed his ear back up and hopefully it won't grow back well. but anyway I don't know if I'm gonna get my ears pierced or not because that was not pretty <laughs> yeah I have seen lots of pictures of earlobes with great big old globs of flesh that just grew and grew and grew but uh, where Casey had that lump removed off her arm, it's looking fairly good, but it's probably going to, I don't know. I don't it, know. Before she got the stitches out, the skin was growing over the stitches until there was just the tiny little knot left. I don't know if that's normal or not. But then in the middle of it, when they took the stitches out, the next day, the mi very middle part popped open yeah. where it wasn't healed good enough. So I've got this perfect little line where the stitch or where the stitches were good. About a fourth and of an inch. And then I have a perfect. hole. <laughs> and then she's got a hole about. Do you think it's a half inch wide? Yeah. yeah. Pretty wide. Yeah. It's not deep, but it's kind of deep. <laughs> yeah. So we're anxious to see how it is, like maybe in six months or so. Oh, um, we have a chance of thunderstorms again tonight. And uh, otherwise, not much is going on. I ba I baked the pie crust, but then I got busy doing lunch and uh, didn't get the filling made. And my daughter-in-law's birthday is today, so Rhett and Taylor wanted to go shopping. So we went shopping to, for, so they could get something for their mother. And uh, now we're going home, and Molly and Toby and I are going to take a nap. Uh, it, getting out in the heat just kills me. So anyway, that's that story. Um, you know anything else today? No. You? <laughs> we don't know anything else, so I guess that's it for now. I'm going to stick those pictures in here. Don't leave yet. <laughs> like I said, this is not a cooking show or a baking show. But for untalented people who use ready-made pie crusts that need to be baked, this is how they sometimes turn out. But they'll be okay. I will love my chocolate pie when I get the filling in there. Oh, I cannot eat fried foods anymore. I have a medical condition that, and fried foods just it doesn't work. I found this recipe on Pinterest for baked okra. Have any of you ever baked okra and is, does it sort of taste like fried okra? Oh, I love fried okra. And then I saw this recipe for a tomato cobbler with pimento cheese biscuits. <laughs> Nobody in my family would touch this except for me. So I'd have to cut this recipe down to where it made like a very you know, maybe one or two portions. But have any of you ever made this? I just wonder what it's really like. Let me know if you've ever made this. Oh, look at this fabric. I love it. I wish I'd found this before I made the lemon apron for Taylor because I like this better than the stripes. But she says she likes her apron better. But isn't this cute? I don't even know if it's available at my Michael's store. I just saw this online. And I don't know what I would make with it. But I love this print. I may have to make something. I'm going to stop this right here. I've got another like 15 minutes of video. <laughs> so I'm going to make this part one. 
And then after it posts, I'll po post part two because I have something else to tell you. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stop here. Bye, guys. See you in the, in the morning. <laughs> Actually, I'll see you in a minute in part two. All right, guys. Thumbs up, please. Leave me a comment. Say hey.